Many of you have been asking me about the Netflix drama The Queen's Gambit and I'm really enjoying it. I'm only halfway through it so I don't want to comment on it yet but I will get around to it. In the meantime what I'd like to do is look at some of the games by some of the best female chess players and I have to start with the greatest of them all, Judith Polgar. At her best, she was in the top 10 in the world, number eight in the world, in fact, with a rating of 2735. And that was way back in 2005. Of course, she's now retired. But 2735 in 2005 is, well, when you think of rating inflation, that was pretty fantastic. I've always liked her style on the chessboard. Wonderful attacking player. I mean, there are so many games you could pick of hers that are, that are so attractive. Um, and she had wonderful, or still has wonderful, tactical imagination. And I just I want to demonstrate that with little, a little story. In 2018, she was one of the commentators at the World Championship match here in London, along with Anna Rudolph. Um, and I, I was kind of dipping in and out of the, the commentary as well. It's kind of substitute for them now and again. And, well, this is game nine of the Carlson Caruana match. And I dipped into the commentary at this moment. And in the game... Uh, Carlson played bishop f3 and, well, he basically, Caruana defended well and the game ended in a draw. Um, but Yudit was looking at this move, bishop d5, and she discovered a, just an incredible variation. I should say that the best move here is queen g5, but she was looking at this variation, queen e5, king g2, and h4, and now rook h1, black takes on g3. Well, you might have to, you might like to, to, to pause the video and try to find the win for white in this position. I mean, I think when one knows there's something there, then you can spot it quite quickly, but Judith spotted it so quickly king takes and now here's the stunner for rook h1 the king just goes to g7 but bishop g8 is a wonderful move and the idea is that after rook takes queen f7 well that's quite a familiar motif the queen drops back or the rook drops back then rook h1 and if king h6 well white can drive the king up the board and now f3 is mate very nice indeed and the game i'd like to show you of units also features a really unexpected attacking move which just completely flummoxed her opponent so this was played in 2003 so Judith paul go with white against Ferenc Berkesh from Hungary. A strong player. I mean, he's been the Hungarian champion on quite a few occasions. And it's a French defence. Bishop g5. Now, instead of um, bishop e7 or bishop b4, Berkesh exchanges on e4. So this is a calmer way of playing the position. Now, g g takes f6 is possible but he plays in a solid way with bishop takes f6 at least white has a nice space advantage here but black has the the two bishops well for the moment anyway um, but white in any case white certainly doesn't want to exchange this one off because that would simplify the position too much and white takes the opportunity to castle on the queen side. Now bishop e7 from black. So Berkesh retains the two bishops. So that could be a long-term asset. But black often wants to prepare the break c5 to attack white's center. 
So white really has to act quickly here and try to get play on the king side before black manages to break or I mean if the game simplifies then those bishops can turn out to be a real asset for black. This, this whole variation was really developed by some Russian players in the 1980s, uh, Chernin for example, Dreyev, Bereyev and and Gurevich as well and yeah they, they developed quite a, um, a handy system for black actually. So h4 was played in quite a few games but Polgar played knight to g5 well there we go we can sense her attacking instincts already she realizes she has to go for it and that threatens the pawn on h7 well i think if black wants to play in quite a safe way the best thing to do is compromise and give up that bishop and just protect the h pawn with the knight but of course white is is always slightly better in these kind of positions but burkish played h6 and now things start to happen a crafty check on h7 just pushing the king into the corner and then polgar played the bishop back to e4 attacking the rook in the corner so this starts to hot up now and now the best way for black to play is actually again to exchange off on g5 and just move the rook but i mean white is obviously a little bit better in this position with space nice space advantage with the pawn on d4 but instead Burkesh got tricky he played pawn takes knight on g5 so what's the idea well if bishop takes rook in the corner then black plays pawn to g4 with the idea that if that knight moves obviously attacked but if it moves then bishop g5 with a very nasty pin so he obviously thought he was getting a bit clever here had Polgar overlooked something well Polgar's next move is the reason we are looking at this game it is so unexpected well a player of the caliber of Burkish overlooked this next move and it is really surprising pawn to g4 absolutely fantastic so white is a piece down but takes time to play this quite slow move and the idea is simply to block that g pawn so that now white threatens to play h4 and then the h file is going to open it's a kind of slow motion attacking move thing is for black problem is that that rook in the corn is attacked so that's another problem as well Burkesh played rook b8 and now here we see the idea pawn to h4 so the g pawn is blocked so this one is going to open and let's let's see what happens so if g takes h4 I should say this this didn't happen then pawn to g5 so you can see that blocks the defense here now if let's say g6 rook check king g7 and rook h1 and the rook is going to come down and mate follows and if king g8 notice it was how crafty it was that polgar checked on h7 to push that king into the corner so that basically white gains a tempo and now here one could play queen f4 but actually it's even better to play bishop h7 to drag the king back over to the h file this is really nice echo of the earlier move so if 
king h8, then rook h4, and this is going to be strong. And if king takes bishop, queen f4, we bring the queen over. It's really attractive. So basically, we're threatening to take here and come down. So f5, neat. Black needs to try to find a route out for that king. Queen takes pawn. King g8 now. Of course, if we could play g6 to trap the king in, that would be fine. But we can't because there's a pin. So first of all, we give a check. Queen h5. So if the king drops back, then we can play g6 and mate down there. So black has to play g6, but now it's very simple. And rook h7, and this drops well. It's obviously completely winning. So that's the idea. h4 just played. We're trying to crack open the h-file. So Burkesh played g6, better defense. So shuts out the bishop. And after pawn takes, king g7, ready to bring the rook over. So just a reminder, white is still a piece down here. And black is looking to defend with rook h8. Queen f4. So this is crucial. The queen swings into the attack. Now, here Burkesh played bishop b7. Let's just look at a couple of alternatives. Well, what about that move, rook h8? Well, in this case, rook takes rook, queen takes. And now it's kind of surprising how white wins this position, actually. Knight e5. It's very, um, well, kind of a very just a very normal move, actually. And if this, well, queen, queen takes is threatened. If knight takes, queen takes, and now queen takes c7, bishop check. And after this, you can see that the rook is gone. Um, it's just an amusing position because black is just kind of split in two. The, the queen, the rook, simply cannot coordinate there you go, split, not split rooks, but split major pieces. Okay, what about another defence? What about bishop d6? Well, once again, there's knight e5. So white wants to, well, yeah, att attack on the h-file, among other things. And if bishop e7, so wants to take here, then there's a nice move. Knight takes f7. So if that's taken, then, well, there you go. There's an echo of this idea that we had in the Carlson Caruana game here. And check and rook h1. And if bishop takes g5, then we have queen takes g5. And that endgame is... Well, just completely winning for white. Uh, an extra pawn and you know, all kinds of things threatened. Knight takes and rook h7. So let's go back. So white, Polgar has just played queen to f4. So Burkesh played bishop b7. And once again, we have a rook sack on h7. Another echo of this idea from earlier. Rook h7, beautiful move. Um, well, king takes was played. Let's just have a very quick look at king g8. Unsurprisingly, this is winning for white. Um, let's just show this variation. It's very nice. So we can take. And now a rook sack. Well, this is the main variation anyway. And this... Leads to checkmate on h7. Okay, back we go. So rook h7 just played. King takes. Now, why did Udit play like this? Well, because of queen check. And here's the point that black cannot play king g7 because of 
check and rook to h1 and game over. So after queen h2, king g8, rook h1 anyway, threatening mate on one of these squares. Bishop takes pawn. This is the best that black has. And, well, queen takes was played. Let's just have a very quick look at king g7. Then knight takes. And this one leads to a nice checkmate. Again, we drag the king up the board. And queen h4 is a nice crossfire. So in the game, queen takes g5, f4. Black is forced to give up the queen. And so it's now queen against rook and knight. And after queen takes, then Burkesh resigned. Is that a little bit premature? Well, I don't think so, actually. Queen f4, whoops, queen f4 to h6 is threatened. And if king g7, well, the simplest way to win this is just to collect another pawn here. And so on. It's it's not difficult for white to play this game at all. Winning position. And yeah, I think it was nice actually that Burkesh finished here because I think it puts the emphasis on the earlier part of this game with this absolutely stunning idea. G4, absolutely brilliant. Well, I'm going to show you a few more games by Judith Polgar over the next few videos. But, well, I have my favourite games, but please do let me know what are your favourite games by Judith Polgar. I'd be very interested. Um, and, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can show a few of your favourites anyway. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Let me know what you think about the Netflix drama The Queen's Gambit. And... Um, yeah, do consider supporting us on PayPal or via Patreon. Links down there. Thanks for watching.